Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to five reasons why US aircraft carriers are nearly impossible to sink. Now, aircraft carriers are probably up there with my favorite things that humanity has built. These things are absolute behemoths. They are basically floating towns. You know, you've got like the biggest aircraft carriers, you, you've got sometimes 5,000 people on board. That's literally a small town. It's just insane that these things can carry that many people, you know, provide enough space for them to, to sleep and do their work, you know, have enough space to have, you know, various actual planes and such on top. You know, the engines are big enough, powerful enough to propel these, you know, these things probably weigh hundreds of thousands of tons, propel all that metal through the, uh, through the oceans. They're really incredible. And you gotta think, how secure are these things? You know, because they are essentially just enormous, huge, just absolute like beasts of boats, really, kind of in a way. Like, so I guess if you were to shoot a missile at it, you know, near the hull, wouldn't that cause a breach and, you know, cause like flooding issues? Like how much protection do these aircraft carriers have? You know, how, um, how secure are they? How robust, how durable are they? This video is gonna hopefully answer that question for me and you guys as well. So yeah, let's do it. Five reasons US aircraft carriers are nearly impossible to sink. Let's go. Large deck nuclear powered aircraft carriers are the signature expression of American military power. No other combat system available to US warfighters comes close to delivering so much offensive punch for months at a time without requiring land bases near the action. As a result, the 10 carriers in the current fleet are in continuous demand from regional commanders, so much so that extended overseas combat tours are becoming the norm. The bottom line what on aircraft that? carrier survivability is that only a handful of countries can credibly pose a threat to America's most valuable warships, and short of using nuclear weapons, none of those is likely to sink one. Really? The vulnerability issue is harder to address, because putting 5,000 sailors and six dozen high-performance aircraft on a $10 billion warship oh. creates- 10 billion. Whew. <laughs> that is an expensive piece of equipment. It's what military experts refer to as a very lucrative target. Taking one out would be a big achievement for America's enemies, and a big setback for America's military. However, the likelihood of any adversary actually achieving that without using nuclear weapons is pretty close to zero. It isn't going to happen, and here are five big reasons why. Mm, isn't? Big claim. Number one, large deck carriers are fast and resilient. Nimitz class carriers of the type that dominate the current fleet, like the Ford class carriers that will replace them, are the biggest warships ever built. They have 25 decks standing 250 feet in height and displace 100,000 tons of water. With hundreds of watertight compartments and thousands of tons of armor, no conventional torpedo or mine is likely to cause serious damage. Nice. And because carriers are constantly moving when deployed at up to 35 miles per hour, fast enough to outrun submarines, finding and tracking them is difficult. Within 30 minutes after a sighting by enemies, the area within which a carrier might be operating has grown to 700 square miles. After 90 minutes, it's expanded to 6,000 square miles. Wow. And I'm sure these carriers probably have a ton of, you know, radar mapping and radar hiding technology, similar to what uh, F-22s and other warplanes have to kind of keep them relatively hard to keep track of. Number two, carrier defenses are formidable. Gosh, what is that thing? I've never seen a gun that shape before. And this thing at the top, is that where all the ammo's kept? 
U.S. aircraft carriers are equipped with extensive active and passive defenses for defeating threats such as low-flying cruise missiles and hostile submarines. These include an array of high-performance sensors, radar-guided missiles, and 20mm Gatling guns that shoot 50 rounds per second. The carrier air wing of 60-plus aircraft includes a squadron of early warning radar planes that can detect approaching threats, including radar periscopes, over vast distances, and helicopters equipped for anti-submarine, anti-surface, and countermine warfare. All of the carrier's defensive sensors and weapons are netted together through an onboard command center for coordinated action against adversaries. That thing's spitting out some serious heat. Number three, carriers do not operate alone. Yeah, they have like a fleet, don't they? Carriers typically deploy as part of a carrier strike group that includes multiple guided missile warships equipped with the Aegis combat system. Aegis is the most advanced air and missile defense system in the world, capable of defeating every potential overhead threat, including ballistic missiles. It's linked to other offensive and defensive systems on board US surface combatants that can defeat submarines, surface ships, and floating mines, or attack enemy sensors needed to guide attacking missiles. In combination with the carrier air wing, these warships can quickly degrade enemy systems used to attack the strike group. Anyone who's watching this video that spent time on a carrier, maybe you were in the navy, like, what's it like living on one of these things? Is It, it must be cramped. Because you're not going to have a huge, like, massive bedroom to yourself. I imagine you're probably bunking. Like, what's it like living on there? Is morale high? The food must be good, I imagine. The food, they've got to make the food decent. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable all the time. Let me know what your experience was like. Carrier strike groups often include one or more stealthy attack subs, capable of defeating undersea and surface threats. Cool seeing them all together like that in that formation. It's like a Number spear. four, Navy tactics maximize survivability. Although US aircraft carriers are protected by the most potent multi layer defensive shield ever conceived, they do not take chances when deployed near potential adversaries. Their operational tactics have evolved to minimize risk while still delivering the offensive punch that is their main reason for existing. For instance, a carrier will generally not operate in areas where mines might have been laid until the area has been thoroughly cleared. It will Makes tend sense. to stay in the open ocean rather than entering confined areas where approaching threats are hard to sort out from other local traffic. It will keep moving to complicate the targeting challenge for enemies. It will also use links to other joint assets from the seabed to low earth orbit to achieve detailed situational awareness. Wow, very clever. I mean, you'd expect nothing less to be fair for an expensive piece of equipment like that. Number five, new technology is bolstering carrier defense. Although there has been much speculation about emerging threats to aircraft carriers, the Navy invests heavily in new offensive and defensive technologies aimed at countering such dangers. The most important advance of recent years has been the netting together of all naval assets in an area so that sensors and weapons can be used to maximum effect. Initiatives like the Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter-Air Program link together every available combat system in a seamless, fast-reacting defensive screen that few adversaries can penetrate. Numerous other advances are being introduced, from the penetrating recon capabilities of stealthy fighters, to shipboard jamming systems to advanced obscurance that confuse the guidance systems of homing missiles. Man. Although the Navy has changed its <laughs> what on earth? Come on now. <laughs> tactics to deal with the proliferation of fast anti-ship missiles and the growing military power of China in the Western Pacific, large deck aircraft carriers remain among the most secure and useful combat systems in America's arsenal. With the unlimited range and flexibility afforded by nuclear propulsion, there are few places they can't go to enforce US interests. How long can the uh, aircraft carrier stay in motion? Like, how long... Do they have to replace the nuclear rods or whatever nuclear substance is powering the thing? Or like how often do they need to replace that? 
threats. And at the rate the Navy is investing in new warfighting technologies, that's likely to remain true for many decades to come. seeing them in action like this. I didn't know that they could reach 35 miles an hour. That's it. like, considering how big and heavy they must be. It just makes you really appreciate like how powerful like that engine must be. To move all of that weight, all of those people as well. Imagine taking the engine of an aircraft carrier and putting it on a bus or something like that. <laughs> You'll probably get that bus up to like a thousand miles an hour. It'd be cool to spend like a couple of days on a carrier just to see what it's like, you know. I wonder if you can feel the motion. Like, you know how you're in a car and you can feel like obviously because you're traveling on a road? But because it's so big, I wonder if you feel stationary. I mean, just in this picture, there's probably like 20 billion dollars. You've got like two carriers, another six, you know, warships. A lot of hardware. You wouldn't really want to fuck with that, would you? <laughs> At least I wouldn't. That's impressive stuff. Really, really fun video. I love seeing, you know, these massive pieces of machinery in action just learning about them because, you know, I'm a civilian, I'm not in the armed forces, I'll probably never, you know, get to go on an aircraft carrier to experience what it's actually like. So seeing them and learning about them via video is probably the next best thing. Although I did, you know, if anybody knows of some kind of uh, scheme where you can like pay to go on board one for like a couple of days, let me know because I would genuinely pay for that. And also if you, you know, if you've experienced it, like there's a few people that watch this uh, channel that have been in the Navy, let me know. Like uh, I think Rich actually, Rich from Seattle, he's been in the Navy. Let me know what it's actually like being on one of these things, man. It must be an incredible, unforgettable experience. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.